Hey guys, this is Michael, and today we are going to be talking about fats and MCT oil. Now, the food you eat can generally be categorized as building blocks or fuel. They help to continually rebuild the cells that make up your body, they're used in physiological processes, or they're stored as energy. Now, this is not only protein, carbohydrates, and fat, but also things like cholesterol, vitamins, and minerals. And there are so many reasons why each of these elements is important. And today we're going to talk about fats as energy how it's stored, and how it is used by your body. So first, there are many types of fat out there. You're probably familiar with the monikers of good fat and bad fat. They basically break down fats into the unsaturated fats, which are the good guys, the saturated fats, which are the questionable guys, and the trans fats, which are the bad guys. Now, the good fats are the fats that you typically get from things like nuts, and seeds, and olive oil, fish, avocado. Generally speaking, they're not going to do you any harm, although they do include the industrial seed oils like canola and corn oils, which oxidize quickly and should be avoided or eaten in moderation. Now, the questionable guys, the saturated fats, aren't bad on the whole, but they can be harmful for some people if they're eaten in large quantities. Now, they include the fats from red meat, and yes, pork is a red meat, uh, butter and other dairy, even coconut oil. Now, they're useful as components of various tissues in your body, including your brain, your cells, and your organs, but they're also associated with greater weight gain and triglyceride levels. Your body doesn't need a terribly large amount of them, but you shouldn't remove them completely from your diet. And the bad fats are the trans fats. Now, these are technically, there are technically trans fats occurring naturally in many foods, but this generally refers to the fats you find in processed foods and hydrogenated fats. Now, these are good things to know, but today we're going to talk about how you store and use fat specifically looking at the phenomenon of MCT oils, what they are, and how they're used by your body differently from other fats. Now first, when you eat fat, it gets broken down in your stomach and in your intestines using compounds from your gallbladder, your pancreas, and the cells lining your intestines. And by the time your intestinal cells are done with the fat you've eaten, it's packaged up into little water-soluble bundles known as triglycerides, which is the form they're in as they travel through your bloodstream. Now, this means that the picture you might have in your head of butter or bacon fat kind of glooping through your arteries and clogging them up is not quite accurate. So, fat is stored mostly under your skin, but it's also on and around some organs like your kidneys, as well as in your liver and in your muscles. Now, one of the things you might have noticed is that men and women store that subcutaneous, that under the skin fat in different places. Men in the chest, the belly, and the butt, and women tend to store it in their breasts, their hips and waist, and their butt. Now, when you eat, your pancreas is signaled to secrete insulin. Insulin helps your cells to absorb things like glucose, but also fatty acids and amino acids. It tells your cells to stop breaking down its stored energy and to start turning the energy being transported into storage forms, which is glycogen for glucose, fat for fatty acids, and protein from amino acids. And as long as you're eating moderate amounts of food and not overeating sugar and refined carbohydrates, this process of storage is not a path to being overweight. This is like your checking account. Fat goes in so you can hang on to the energy you don't need right now, but you can also pull it out and convert it to energy as you need it, like when you're not eating or you're exercising. Notice you never worry about your checking account getting too full. Your body is going to use glycogen first. It's in the muscles and can be used converted quickly the moment the muscle needs to move. Now, fat is next. It's broken down into fatty acids. And if you need glucose for your brain, for example, your brain can only use fat or ketones, I'm sorry, glucose or ketones for energy and you don't have stored glycogen, your body can make its own glucose from amino acids in a process called gluconeogenesis. Now here we could veer into a conversation on ketones and ketosis, but we're gonna save that for another video. But the short story is that your body can use stored fat to make ketones that serve as energy for your body and your brain. This spares your muscles, especially when you're fasting. The reason some people lose muscle when under eating is that they never enter into ketosis and their body's only source of glucose for their brain is amino acids from muscle tissue. Okay, but back to fats. Now, different dietary fats go on different paths, and this is where MCT oil comes in. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. A triglyceride, which is a fat vehicle, is made up of three, that's your tri, fatty acid molecules connected to a glycerol. The chain length refers to the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms trailing off the end, and they range in length from 6 to 21. The medium chain triglycerides have a chain length between 6 and 12 and are found in things like coconut oil, palm oil, goat milk. Now, MCT oils became more popular with the rise of the ketogenic diet, and that's because these medium chain triglycerides provide a fast source of fat energy that can help your body stay in a ketogenic state, which just means making more ketones. 
But that doesn't mean you have to be eating a ketogenic diet to take advantage of the benefits of MCT oils, which are things like energy, weight loss, hunger suppression, and brain function. Most people don't, don't get enough MCTs in a Western diet, and this is mostly because of the vilification of all saturated fats. Now, just because the medium chain triglycerides contain the molecule that range from 6 to 12 in length, even those don't act all the same. The gold standard for MCT is the 8 and 10 length molecule. Some studies have shown that those MCTs will cause your body to burn fat even if you're not eating a ketogenic diet. Your body's going to turn those into ketones bypassing the fat storage pathway. That's the important thing to know. Fat as energy without storing it first. This creates a rapid source of energy for your body and your brain, but it also increases your metabolism, causing your body to burn more of its stored energy, including fats. Longer chain triglycerides are shuttled into the fat storage process. However, they too are converted to ketones when your body converts that fat as energy. Now, the ketones that are produced by your body when you consume MCT oils also stimulate a hunger suppressing hormone called ghrelin. And that means your body is going to stop telling you you're hungry so often when you consume MCT oils. Finally, those ketones that get created are a great source of energy for your brain, meaning you don't have to consume a carb-loaded breakfast in order to ensure you're getting glucose for your brain to function. Your brain works for the most part off of glucose, but it loves ketones. And MCT oils can provide a boost of energy for your brain. So if you've been wondering why people are putting MCT oil into their morning coffee in lieu of eating breakfast, you now have some idea. It provides quick forms of energy and helps them to feel full, all while burning fat to boot. Now, going a little deeper, we can talk about the different lengths and why people don't just consume coconut oil as opposed to this concentrated form of MCTs. So first is a C6 chain. It's called caproic acid, and that converts very rapidly to ketones, but there's very little of it in coconut oil. It also has a tendency to upset your stomach, and it tastes pretty bad, so mostly it's distilled out of MCT oils you buy in the store. The C8 chain is caprylic acid. And it's a quick source of ketones, but it still only makes up about 7% of coconut oil. And when I say quick, consider that your body has a 26-step process to make energy out of sugar. C8 becomes ketones in three steps. The C10 chain, which is capric acid, is also only about 7% of coconut oil. It takes a little longer to make into energy, but it's also a little less expensive to make, meaning a combo of 8 and 10 is a less expensive alternative to pure C8 oil. And the C12 chain, which is known as lauric acid, while technically an MCT is not treated like an MCT by your body, but it is 49% of coconut oil. If you want lauric acid, you can eat coconut oil, but many blends also contain a good amount of it. And you do want lauric acid. It's a saturated fat that's not associated with cardiovascular disease, and it's also a strong antimicrobial. So anything longer than 12 is a long chain triglyceride. These exist in coconut oil as well, but also in many other oils, and they don't have the same benefits of the C6 to C10 chains. So you can begin to see why, if you want to consume fat as a raw source of energy, you'd use the MCT oil instead of coconut oil. Only 14% of the coconut oil you might consume is made up of MCTs. You're simply not going to get enough of the good stuff just by eating coconut oil. The rest is fat you're going to store rather than use immediately. Now, lest you think you could only put MCT oils in your coffee, Think again. You can use MCT oil in salad dressings. You can add it to things like smoothies or oatmeal. If you want to incorporate MCTs in your cooking, though, coconut oil is a better option as it has a higher smoke point. Now, if you're comparing MCT oil to MCT oil powder, just consider a few things. Oils can be tough on some people. There is a side effect known as disaster pants. Um, and powders make it possible for people who struggle with the oil to get MCTs into their diet. But when you're buying a powder, just make sure you can find what it's made of. Is it mostly C8 and C10? How much C12 is in it? You really don't want it to be much more than 30%. You know, does it contain sugar, glucose, or maltodextrin, or something like that? What is the powder part made of? Things like acacia gum and dextrin are really good carriers for MCT that won't affect ketosis. Does it have a long list of ingredients you don't need? And how much fat versus a carrier powder are you actually getting? Keep in mind that a tablespoon of oil is 14 grams of fat, and pure MCT oil will be 14 grams of MCTs. And just compare that to what you're getting in your powder. So that is the long and the short and the medium of fats and MCTs. If you're curious, just start incorporating a little MCT oil into your morning nutrition. Oils and powders can be mixed into many of the things you're already eating. See what kind of benefits you find. Are you less hungry? Do you get a boost of energy? Do you feel more alert? What about weight loss? Do you notice any changes? Now, everything is always an experiment of one with you. Research shows a lot of things, but everyone's a little different 
uh, and things like MCTs will work to a greater or lesser degree, degree to each person. So I hope you learned something you can use today and I hope to see you next time.